I'm doing well. Doing well. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our press briefing with regard to what the state is doing to slow the spread of coronavirus and other topics, because we're really kind of moving on to talk about other things. But we will talk about coronavirus first. As always, we remind people that we need to continue to do social distancing. So far here in the state of Nebraska, we have seen that our hospitalizations have continued to decline. We hit a high on May 27th of about, uh, how, do you remember how exactly how many it was, Gary? 257. 257. Uh, as of today, we've got about 100 people in the hospitals across Nebraska related to, that have tested positive for coronavirus. Uh, put that in perspective, that's out of 4,000 hospital beds overall. So that's uh, probably the lowest number we've had. Since, well, yesterday was 97, so we're in that category. But that's probably the lowest we've had again since probably the middle of April. So we continue to see declining hospitalizations, so that's good news. Our cases have been relatively steady, so that's good news too. But again, this only happens if we continue to practice social distancing. We wanna make sure that if you're going out in public, you keep that six foot of distance between you and other people. If you're gonna go into an enclosed, confined space, like say a store, wearing a mask is a good idea. Uh, wash your hands frequently, and again, if you're sick, Please stay home. We want to make sure that you're not infecting other people. And of course, we always want to encourage people to use Test Nebraska. Uh, right? Oh, and I, I do want to share a success story with regard to social distancing. So I was talking to Dr. Adipur yesterday, and they had a basketball team, a girls' basketball team, where one of the girls tested positive. But when they were doing conditioning, they'd all stayed like 15 feet apart and so forth. And all the public health officials made the determination that because they were doing such a good job of practicing social distancing, the other girls didn't need to quarantine. So again, social distancing works. Great success story there. Please keep that in mind if you're organizing events to try and keep that distance between you and other people. Hospital bed data. I mentioned we've got uh, 100 cases in the hospital coronavirus. Overall hospital bed capacity is at 41%. Uh, our ICU bed availability is at 46%, and ventilator ability is at 78%. And I think we're down to 18 people on ventilators right now, specifically directly related to coronavirus. 18 is our lowest number. Yeah, 18 our lowest number since we've been keeping track of that. So I'm getting good data on that. So again, good news there. We talked about Test Nebraska. On Tuesday, we uh, actually swabbed over 3,600 people. So we got a new record high for the number of people we had swabbed. And one of the things that we are doing, again, the whole key to how we manage this virus on an ongoing basis is making sure that we test people. When you test positive, we get you to stay home so you're not infecting other people. That's called isolation. We go review all your contacts. Some people, again, may have to quarantine, some not, depending on the closeness of the level of contact. But really collapsing that time is going to be one of the important things we want to do. And so we've been focused on that with Test Nebraska to try and get that turned around as quickly as possible. The, oh, last week, Test Nebraska turned around tests in 31 hours. Um, Nebraska Public Health Lab, 51 hours. Uh, Nebraska Medicine, 38 hours, 38.4 hours. Uh, we have been having some issues, and I think it was reported on earlier with regard to some of the commercial labs like Quest and LabCorp. Quest was taking 113 hours last week and LabCorp 120 hours, almost 121 hours. So again, if you're thinking about that you'd like to go get tested, Test Nebraska is a great option. You can sign up at testnebraska.com. We've got, had over 214,000 uh, individuals sign up for Test Nebraska. It's a great way to go out and get tested. So please encourage you to, uh, again, to again sign up for testnebraska.com. We're also changing the way we're providing those tests. So in the past, we had the mobile labs with the National Guard. We're now transitioning to hospitals. I think we actually have a pharmacy, local public health labs. They're going to be running the Test Nebraska program. So um, we're going to be having a transition here. Obviously, we're going to need to you know, work out with the new folks who are doing it, um, you know, how to make sure that it gets efficient, gets done um, you know, quickly. Uh, there's going to be a learning curve there. So we do ask your patients as we kind of do go through that transition. But it will allow for. Uh, those tests to be done all across the state on a regular basis. So again, testnebraska.com, you'll see there's a lot, there'll be a lot more 
places where people can get that, get signed up and get tested. And again, we're not putting any restrictions on who can get tested, so anybody who signs up can start looking for a place to get scheduled. All right, so that's Test Nebraska. Next, um, vaccine. We had great news this week from Becton Dickinson. BD, who has four facilities here in Nebraska, is going to be investing $70 million to create syringes and, and needles for vaccines. So again, a very important work to be able to help fight this war against the coronavirus is going to be done right here in the state of Nebraska with uh, a great company, BD, who is uh, actually, even prior to this $70 million investment, had invested uh, over $300 million in our state, expanding their capacity here for other products that they have. Uh, we're very pleased to see this, so thank you, uh, BD, for your investment here in the state of Nebraska and your contribution to fighting the war on coronavirus. Next, we wanna, we're going to have um, Jim Swenson, who's the administrator um, for the parks at the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission, come up and talk a little bit about exploring Nebraska. And with everything that's going on with regard to the pandemic, there's never been a better time to throw the kids in the car and drive around the state of Nebraska and do your summer vacation right here. One of the best summer vacations we ever took with my family, that's what we did. We threw the kids in the car, drove around Nebraska, you know, went to Fort Kearney, went to Fort Robinson, we went to a rodeo, we went to the Kool-Aid Museum in Hastings. There's just all sorts of great things, great family fun for folks to see. So we really encourage people to take a look at what you can do with regard to our state parks, right here in Nebraska and explore Nebraska that way. Uh, also, you've probably seen uh, from the media reports, it's a great year to be fishing here in Nebraska as well. We had a record 89 pound, 53 inch catfish caught in Nemahawk County by Richard Hagen of Swanton. Uh, I can't imagine what you're gonna be doing with that. That is awesome, that's, that'll be, that's a great fish. We had a wiper which Jim tells me is a cross between the striped bass and the white bass, right? Uh, 21 pound wiper caught at Lake McConaughey by a gentleman from Colorado. And then we had an uh, 89 pound, no, yeah, it was 89 pound carp uh, uh, caught in Dodge County in a private sand pit uh, by a bow hunter. So great big fish being caught here in the state of Nebraska. And the Game of Parks also has a program called Take Em Fishing which is about getting kids out and getting them engaged. And of course, if you're 16 or under, you don't need a fishing permit to be able to, out and do, to go out and do that. So again, great opportunities to find all sorts of great activities here in the state of Nebraska. Great things to see. And Jim is gonna come up and talk to us a little bit more about that. So Jim, will you come up and talk to us about how Nebraska's enjoy our beautiful state here? It is a beautiful state, thanks. Good morning. Thank you, Governor Ricketts. Uh, the Game Commission is honored to join you here today, and it's our privilege to speak about our outdoor Nebraska and Nebraska's great state park treasures. Outdoor recreation is a staple in most Nebraskan lives and an important part of our culture and tradition. Many families can boast a rich heritage of camping, fishing, hunting, boating, and various activities, adventures that foster great memories and serve as a script for repeated sharing of fond family memories and stories around the campfire. Many of those stories are associated with Nebraska's great state parks, and we're very pleased with that. State park system is, has been around a long time. We'll celebrate a great milestone in 2021, 100 years in existence, a proud legacy of achievements that started in 1921 with the dedication of Shattern State Park in Western Nebraska. The centennial year will be filled with fun events, programs, and activities to celebrate the development of what is now a very robust park system that serves the needs of Nebraska citizens, employs many, and helps sustain our important tourism industry. Thanks also, Governor, for recognizing the time-honored tradition of fishing, a great activity for families. State park venues play a very important role in providing access and opportunity for Nebraska anglers. We commend our fisheries division for maintaining that healthy fish population that produces those record fish that the governor referenced. And also for the Take em Fishing program, a program that brings an expanded audience to the landscape and reinstills the enjoyment of going fishing, finding that shade tree along a river, standing along a, a lake, and just having a great time together. But whether it's a record fish as mentioned, or just that very first fish, 
that maybe isn't so big, but it's the very first one, both are a rewarding experience for anybody that goes out there. We've certainly witnessed over the past few months, and especially during the recently completed July 4th holiday weekend, that more people are fishing and that parks have become increasingly busy with guests. More and more people are recognizing that, as we say, time outdoors is time well spent. And we're glad that they're out there, especially during this unique period when we, that we are all currently experiencing. With the menu of 76 park destinations spanning the state, we offer abundant opportunities for families to have fun and enjoy their favorite outdoor activities and create those fond memories. Whether you're seeking time-honored traditions or modern conveniences, or maybe just a chance to get out in nature amid those unspoiled beauty spots of Nebraska's wild places, you can fulfill those desires in one of our eight state park areas. Maybe your goal is just to be outdoors, camping, picnicking, hiking, boating, or swimming. We can serve that up to you at one of Nebraska's 58 great state recreation areas. Perhaps you're looking to just take a step back in time, following the footsteps of those that were here prior. All 10 of our state historical parks have some interesting stories to share with you. Take time this summer to find your own personal destination. Be adventurous, go out, enjoy the parks. From historic Fort Robinson and Shadron State Park or Wildcat Hills in the west, to Ponca State Park, the Fremont Lakes, or Indian Cave in the east. Lots of places in between, a lot of variety in between. There's literally something for everyone. As you travel to your desired park destinations, I encourage you to not forget to enjoy the journey. That's a large part of it. Perhaps get off the familiar trail, and follow the path offered by Nebraska's tour Nebraska Tourism's Passport Program, or the Great Park Pursuit, which is sponsored by the Game and Parks and other partners. Each include a number of park areas and those unique challenges to get out and enjoy Nebraska. Game and Parks takes pride in our innovative approach to serve the recreational desires of the public. If you desire an extended park visit, overnight stays can range from cabins to camping. Depending on your comfort zone, again, something for everyone. Camping allows people to escape the routines, discover their favorite home away from home environments, and gather around the campfire to share those great stories together. Envision, if you can, a campsite with a view of the beautiful buttes at Fort Robinson, or along the sandy beaches of one of our western Nebraska reservoirs. Demand for camping opportunities continues to grow, and thanks to the public's continued patronage and user fee investments, we are able to proactively upgrade or expand our inventory of campsites and maintain our critical infrastructure for the maximum enjoyment opportunity. For those just looking for a quick, quick weekend trip, parks also have many day use activities such as hiking trails, disc golf, diverse nature programs and education programs, kayaking, and of course, as mentioned, excellent fishing opportunities. A personal recommendation that I'll give here today is to paddle the Niobrara River at Smith Falls State Park. It's an adventure that every Nebraskan should enjoy. The COVID-19 health concern has presented unique challenges and an interruption to our normal routines. Fortunately, your Nebraska State Parks have remained open for the day use throughout these past several months. The Nebraska Game and Parks Commission has worked closely with local health departments and within state and national recommendations to restore services and activities across the state while working to protect the health and safety of our staff and the public. As we restore services, we do remind visitors, as the governor referenced, to practice responsible recreation while enjoying time outdoors. This means staying home if you're sick, avoiding crowded areas, maintaining the all-important social distancing, and following any local directed health measures. We recognize the value the public assigns to outdoor recreation. The interruption to our normal routines is unfortunate. And we commend those who have shown support for our mission to provide outdoor opportunities that keep people and their communities healthy, safe, informed, and engaged in the outdoors. At an early age, I too, Pete, was introduced to uh, the excitement of the outdoors. Many of my favorite memories were and continue to be developed from treasured time shared with my family, fishing, and camping. 
As I've traveled the state in recent weeks to take measure of our park management efforts, I can attest that countless numbers of families are building their own memories and legacies in Nebraska's parks. I encourage and invite each of you to do the same. It's an investment that does pay great dividends. Our great team of agency professionals look forward to hosting you at one of your Nebraska State Parks soon. To accommodate the search for your next destination, or if you're looking for information on how to get started, I just encourage you to contact the Game Commission. We'll share that information. We'll give ideas. Or visit our informative and photo-rich website at OutdoorNebraska.org to learn more. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And with that, uh, uh, just on the outdoor, you mentioned the outdoornebraska.gov. You can also go to outdoornebraska.gov slash take em fishing, right, for the take em fishing program, T-A-K-E-E, -E, take E-M, right, take em fishing, F-I-S-H-A. All right, great. So thanks for being here, Jim, appreciate it. And again, encourage Nebraskans. Great opportunity this summer. If you don't feel like getting on a plane, drive around our great state. It's a beautiful state. There's lots of great fun things that are family oriented to do. I highly encourage it. All right, so next week uh, on Monday, we will be doing a uh, press briefing from our new uh, Department of Motor Vehicle office in West Omaha. So that's where we'll be on Monday morning. So look for us there to talk about that. Another great way to be able to serve Nebraskans. And uh, Taylor, I don't see any questions that have been sent in ahead of time. Do we not have any? Did you have anybody who sent them in on your text or anything? Okay, well, we'll go straight then to questions from the uh, reporters here in the audience. Nobody, huh? All right, then everybody go home. <laughs> Fred. Go ahead, Fred. We can go back and forth, it's fine. Uh, with regard to the um, you know, reporting, with regard to whether it was a in-kind contribution or a you know independent expenditure, with regard to the Republican Party in uh, Senator Slama's race, I think the the amount of money we still got determined to be out there. So I'm not familiar with the details of that. So. I don't know, I can't give you an answer specifically about the details of how that should be reported. I'm sure the Republican Party is doing the right thing. Uh, the Republican Party can coordinate with candidates, so I don't, there's no you know, problem with doing that. And everything that um, the Republican Party did to be able to make sure we got a conservative like Julie Slama elected, or you know, through her primary, and to get her elected in November is absolutely appropriate. So I, 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 I don't see that there's a problem. My understanding of, of the campaign finance law is you cannot coordinate if you declare it's an independent expenditure, and that's what former Governor Heinemann is saying is inconceivable because Jessica is both a campaign consultant and reportedly was involved in the mailing that the party signed. Well, I, we'll have to dig into it. I don't, I don't know the details with regard to the campaign finance, but I'm quite certain everything was done properly. Yeah, Paul. Do I still employ Jessica Flanagan? Yes, I still uh, employ Des Jessica Flanagan as a political consultant for me personally. And have you asked her to get involved in that race? Have I asked Jessica to, uh, well, I didn't ask Jessica to go work for Julie Salama, but I certainly support Jessica working for Julie Salama. So she did that on her own? Well, I support Jessica working for Julie Salama. I think, I don't know how Julie decided to hire Jessica, but I think it's a great move. Jessica is probably one of the best political consultants here in the country, in the state. She does excellent work. 
That's one of the reasons why I hire her, because Jessica is the best in the business here in Nebraska. That's why I hire her. Well, I think we've got laws in the books right now with regard to uh, how campaign finance is disclosed, and I think those laws are sufficient. So you wouldn't support a law that says these independent groups are educational purpose? Yeah, I'm not looking to add more red tape with regard to uh, any of our laws here in the state. And we got laws with regard to how you know, camp contributions are disclosed, and I think those laws are good. Well, certainly, freedom of speech is important um, with regard to making sure people can still express themselves. Uh, you know, going back to the founders of our country, um, many of them published under, you know, writers' names when they they put things in the paper. I have not done that. No. <laughs> So with regard to testnebraska.com, so for example, when we're doing some of the testings like with the Wall Housing Authority, we are allowing people just to drive up or walk up and be able to get signed up for testnebraska.com. And we've done that in other uh, situations as well. So we've tried to be flexible. Uh, we still encourage people to be able to you know, go to the website to sign up. But in some circumstances, as we're working with uh, you know, different folks who are administering the test, we have uh, been more flexible. Yeah, Andrew. So the question was with regard to private doctors who uh, patients go to and uh, ha having access to Test Nebraska. I mean, what I would encourage is those doctors to send their patients to Test Nebraska um, and have their patients then let them know what the test results were uh, as potentially a faster way to get those results back. So, uh, for example, I gave the time. I think many of those physicians are using some of these commercial labs like LabCorp and Quest. Well, if last week we were able to get those tests at Test Nebraska turned around in 31 hours, and it was taking 120 hours at LabCorp, obviously that would be faster. So uh, we've got a system in place that allows us to turn around those tests quickly. So if doctors want to take advantage of it, we certainly welcome to do it. But again, if we start uh, changing that system, that's going to slow down the, the response time to be able to turn that around and the efficiency of it. So we're not exploring ways to give exceptions to it with regard to doctors, but I certainly encourage them to go ahead and use it uh, for their patients. And that's what they're saying is that they tell their patients to use it, then they've got to fill out the questionnaire, they've got to go through that, and that takes days to, you know, to get accepted, and then another days to get an appointment, and that's what's taking so long. That's why they don't do testify. So with regard to, uh, you know, having their, uh, their doctor's patients sign up for testnebraska.com and filling out the questionnaire, it's a five-minute questionnaire. But yes, then they do have to find a scheduled time that's available and uh, then you know, get in line you know, with everybody else who's using Test Nebraska. But we're not going to allow those patients to cut in line in front of somebody else who's already using Test Nebraska. Um, you know, we've got a system in place. And if the doctors want to continue to use their current system, they're certainly welcome to continue to use that current system where, you know, again, some of these companies are taking 120 hours to get back to them. That's individuals. That's individual assessments have been done on, through testnebraska.com. Well, some people can test it twice. So that's the individuals. We actually have more. Do you have the figure on the total number of assessments there, Dr. Antone? You mean like reassessment things? Well, there's a total number of assessments that have been done. It's on that um, sheet that we got from Test Nebraska. So. 
678,000 assessments have been done. So you can see people are doing multiple assessments, 214,000 individuals. I think we've done 72,000 tests. 672,632. Yeah, 72,000 uh, tests have been done. So some of those tests will have been people who have tested multiple times. Actually, 10% of Nebraskans being tested here in the state is a good number. Uh, we certainly encourage people to continue to sign up. We want people to sign up and get tested, and that's one of the things I think that people are going to see is as we transition to some of these other uh, organizations, whether it's hospitals, uh, we've got a pharmacy that's signed up, local health departments, and they set up their regular hours, that people may find that more convenient because there'll be a regular schedule in their community to be where they know that it's going to be to be able to get signed up and go in and get tested. So we actually encourage people to get tested. And I think if you look at just overall 10% of our population being tested, that's progress. We want to continue to see people continue to sign up. Yeah, go ahead, Andrew. So the question was, if somebody goes on and gets tested, tested positive, and then goes back a second time to get tested uh, and gets tested positive again, does that count as two positives in our overall, you know, 20,600 and some number of cases tested positive? And the answer would be yes. That, would, that person would get counted twice in that, that figure. Uh, and I don't know that we have a way to separate out whether they got tested positive, recovered, and then got tested positive again. Uh, we do know that, for example, there are some people that with all these tests, uh, it doesn't matter who's administering it, you know, um, you get tested positive and you may get tested and tested and tested. It may take several weeks before you test negative on it. For some reason, sometimes the virus just hangs around in some people's systems so that they continue to test positive even though they're not showing any symptoms. So we've had some patients in the hospital with that. Is, I don't think it's very many, but we've had a few people like that. So the question is, how much does that skew, uh, how much virus is actually in the community? Well, I would say that we're no different from any other state because the same test we're running here is what everybody else is running too. So if you're trying to compare us on a national basis, it's still apples to apples because we're still kind of using the same sort of testing. So it won't change how Nebraska looks versus other states. And we also know that there's a lot of people who get the coronavirus and don't have any symptoms and may never get tested, and so they, they escape being noticed at all. So it's never gonna be a perfect number that we've got with regard to how many people test positive, because there are gonna be people that, as you pointed out, test several times positive, and, and that number goes higher. But there's also gonna be people that get the virus, never have any symptoms, and recover, and we never know because they never get tested. So it's, it's always gonna be a, just a, a, you know, what we test is what we're able to do, so it's never gonna be an exact number. But it's always going to be relative to everybody else in the country, too. That will be relatively the same. Yeah, Paul. Talk about prisons. So prisons. Talk about prisons. Yeah, we got to look at these uh, requests for information. One of the estimates was this prison might cost $450 million. Well, we're developing a system that has a So the question was with regard to the request for information that Director Frakes did, looking at additional capacity for our correction system. And one of the options he's looking at is a lease program. We lease property all the time at the state of Nebraska, so that's nothing new. And so that's just an option that, again, this is a request for information. We're gathering information as Director Frakes is putting together his budget. So we're gathering more information, but looking at leasing is not anything new. This is something the state of Nebraska does all the time. The question was, do we have a lease that was $25 million a year? I don't know that we have a single lease that is $25 million a year. The 
So uh, is, would the lease be out of the ordinary? Uh, again, I don't know that we have one uh, for $25 million, but we, we can go check and, and take a look and see what you know, kind of leases we have. So the question was, I'm not concerned that that's going to commit future legislators. We're doing a whole uh, redo of our HVAC system here, our heating and air conditioning system in the Capitol. It's a multi-year project across multiple legislatures. That was started years ago before I even became governor. Uh, clearly, we have, a, you know, there's precedent for doing big projects where we commit future legislatures. Remember, no, that was never funded, Paul. That was never funded. So uh, it was not cash reserve. So when we did the $100 million HVAC project, that was started with general fund dollars, and it was committing future legislatures to continue to fund that with general fund dollars. They adjusted that over the years. They, they, took, they cut that back or delayed some things. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, obviously that $100 million project has been adjusted up and down. But the point is a legislature committed future legislators to actually finishing that project to do the, you know, re, you know, replace our HVAC system here in the capital. So there is precedent for this. We signed a contract. We signed a contract, Paul. We signed contracts to do all this work. Now we did in phases, but we signed contracts to do this work on the capital. So the question was, Justin Garcia at the Star Herald, um, talking about people in the panhandle and how is that going to be supported. And I don't know if you've got the list of people we've signed contracts with. Probably you don't have right at the top. Well, I think there's 32 that have been executed out of 38 yeah. contracts signed on, and, and Great Plains is our regional west is one of those areas. Uh, regional west is one of the hospitals. So regional west in uh, Scotts Bluff will be one of the facilities that is doing the Test Nebraska program. So. Uh, there's probably going to be others in that area. I just don't have to have them. We've signed 32 contracts with different organizations to be able to do the testing for Test Nebraska. And 5,800 people in the panhandle have been tested. Uh, I, don't, I can't tell you. Uh, I know that Kim Engel, for example, with uh, the uh, public health department has a stat on how, what percentage of folks have been tested. I don't know what that stat is right offhand. But I'm sure it's you know, relatively uh, in the ballpark of what's been going on in other public health departments and in the state. So, uh, you know, I think people in the panhandle will continue to be well served with regard to getting the testing done and uh, making sure that, again, if we find somebody who tests positive, we get that person to isolate so they don't infect other people in the community. Andrew. Are we having problems with the public dashboard with regard to logging in? Yeah, and now you're required to log in and put a password, and then, you know, and it seems to be harder to access your information. You know what? Actually, Andrew, I noticed that today that it had asked me for a password for Argus or something like that. Uh, just close the browser, go to type in dhhs.ne.gov slash coronavirus and then click on the button that says Nebraska case count, and it popped up and worked fine for me. So uh, we'll, we will have to run it, uh, run it down to see what's been going on. I haven't had a chance to follow up on that this morning yet. But I did notice that happened today, so good catch. But uh, I, I just went back in, tried it again, and, got it able, and was able to work, make it work. And are you at all disappointed that you won't get to see South Dakota State this year? <laughs> Uh, am I disappointed that we're not going to see South Dakota State? You know, I was thinking about that when I was reading about the article today. I'm like, oh, uh, we're not going to be able to see some of these games that we uh, usually kind of warm up on. It's going to be uh, just going straight into the conference schedule. So uh, that's going to put uh, some new challenges on the team. You know, uh, I'm just uh, looking forward to seeing how we can play football here this fall for University of Nebraska. It's probably not going to look like it did last year. Uh, obviously, the Big Ten's uh, said there's not going to be any conference games, but uh, you know I'm excited to see some football here and uh, work with the university to be able to make that happen. Uh, on a serious note, you know as well though, um, have you guys talked about having Test Nebraska or using any of resources to help you know any athletic team be able to test quickly and, and do immediate tests 
so that their athletes could be checked out in order to, you know, to um, either notify if they've got the disease or if they can play. So the question was, have we talked about using Test Nebraska to be able to test athletes so they could play in athletic competitions and so forth? On a broader scale, we have talked to all the institutions of higher education here in the state of Nebraska to ask them what their needs are going to be to open up this fall with regard to PPE and testing and so forth. So we've had the higher level conversation. It's not been specifically about athletics. We've asked uh, all the you know, University of Nebraska, um, the private colleges like Creighton, um, the state colleges, the community colleges to submit their requests to us. And we are working, as, as a state, we are working to be able to meet those needs. So I can't tell you specifically about athletics, but just broadly speaking, we are working with all those institutions of higher education with regard to how they want to get reopened this fall. Is that something that you could do, you know, um, you get the capabilities of doing? So the question is, could we do that? And we're certainly taking a look at that to see how we might be able to structure it. Obviously, you know, we'd, we'd still have to make sure we're managing this appropriately. We can't have everybody test all their athletes at once, but we're certainly um, willing to work with all of our institutions with regard to how we can meet their needs uh, for this fall. Other questions? All right, folks, thank you very much. Again, appreciate you all taking the time to be able to talk about what we're doing here in the state with regard to coronavirus. Appreciate Game and Parks coming. Jim, sorry you didn't get any questions, but thanks for being here to talk about. Great opportunity for every Nebraskan to throw the kids in the car, drive around the state, go to our state parks. We've got a beautiful state. There's lots to see. If you don't want to get on a plane, this is the place to spend your summer vacation right here in Nebraska. And again, remind people, please continue to keep that six foot distance in public. Wash your hands, wear a mask when you go to the store. All that will help us continue to slow the spread of the virus. We have you know, the lowest level of hospitalizations we've seen since we've been able to keep track of this. That's a good thing. We want to continue to have that. We want to continue to keep our uh, you know, hospital capacity intact. So please continue to help us do that by doing our social distancing. And again, thank you to all the Nebraskans who have sacrificed to be able to make sure we slow the spread of coronavirus here in Nebraska. It has been absolutely successful, and we want to continue to have that success here in our state. Thank you all again. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next week. Thanks.